Hi everyone, welcome back to Cine Goes to China, where my boyfriend and I are dedicating most of our travel plans to explore the hidden gems of this diverse and historical country. This time, we've decided to take a long weekend away from Hong Kong to a place that is regarded as one of the six most beautiful ancient villages in China, the Daoxing Dong Village. Located in Guizhou Province, we'll be taking the high-speed rail from West Kowloon to Guilin West first, before changing to another short train to Chongjiang. The whole journey will take just less than four hours. Hi everyone! Hi! We're back at West Kowloon Station. We're taking a long weekend trip away to a part of China that we've never been to before, which is Guizhou. We're staying at a really cool village. But we haven't really done much research, so we'll share with you in a bit more later. Um, yeah, very excited. It's gonna be a chilled weekend. Um, see you guys in a bit. Bye! Since this is a long train ride, the first thing I did this time was scan the QR code on my seat and ordered food delivery. On long haul trains, you're actually able to order food from restaurants at a particular station, and they will deliver it straight to your seat. For the rest of the train ride, I did some research and watched the film, and the next thing we knew, we've arrived at Guilin. We just got to Guilin West Station. It's raining a little bit. Looks like just some showers though. Um, we're gonna head into the city to grab some food. It's our first time in Guilin City, so we're gonna spend about four hours here before we continue our journey to the Dong Village. Yeah. So they're famous for this here. So it might not be for everyone, but this type of snack has been a staple for many provinces across the country and has been for over a thousand years. Made of the oil derived from certain types of tea seed, different cultures have their own interpretations. So I do recommend giving it a try just so you can taste the difference across the country. The rest of the food was delicious, especially these rice cakes and pastries. Highly recommend this place if you're ever stopping by Guilin City. Ooh, that looks pretty. We're not quite sure what we're gonna do next because we have a less suitcase. Three hours to kill. Three hours to kill. Um, yeah, I guess more. we'll find out. <laughs> We ended up at a mall because the weather was just a bit temperamental and the suitcase made things a little bit inconvenient. It's meant to be a relaxing and spontaneous trip anyway, right? Well, malls and supermarkets in the mainland are always interesting to us because Hong Kong just doesn't have the same amount of space. I also love that in the supermarket, you really have everything under one roof. Might sound strange, but Hong Kongers, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, we headed back to the station for a quick 30-minute ride from Guilin to Chongjiang. Finally made it to our destination! <laughs> it's already feeling very cultural. And there's a lot of people going to the same place. It's probably not the relaxing weekend that we were hoping for, but we'll see! Um, we are going to get picked up by the hotel that will take us straight 
to the village and the hotel. So, yes. The car ride from the station to the village only takes about 10 minutes. And the best surprise was that it turns out Hong Kong residents can enter the village for free until the end of the year. Normally, it's about 80 RMB for a ticket. Oh. Wow. The pictures looked really cool, but this is even better. <laughs> The it's a huge bathroom. Double. <laughs> Even has a washing machine for longer stays. So cool. Let me also take you upstairs. Wow, a little annex. I did not know this was included in the room. A quick freshen up and we're out the door to hunt for food. The hotel strongly recommended a restaurant within just a few minutes walk, so we got to see the village life at night too. Super lively and busy. For dinner, we ordered the famous spicy sour soup hot pot. We also ordered a few Dong local dishes like the braised tofu and roast pork. Super, super, super good. It was such a nice first meal. Not sure how the next meals can really beat this. It came to about 300 Hong Kong dollars, a tad more expensive than I expected, but I guess we are in a confined space after all. What do you think about dinner? It's good, very tasty. Very, very tasty. <laughs> That hot pot soup was so delicious. It's like, it's got this lemongrassy taste to it as well. Very different from most sour, spicy dishes that we've had before, but it is quite spicy. So definitely go for less spicy. It is so dumb. Oh, hi, hi. <laughs> pork was also so good, the crackling was amazing. Oh, that was a delicious meal. We had a stroll around the town after all that food. And I mean, doesn't it give Spirited Away vibes? Anyway, we checked out the street food, grabbed some desserts, then a quick karaoke session in our hotel room just before bed. Rise and shine! We finally get to see the view from our room in the daylight, and I'm speechless. The hotel even delivered coffee to our room so we got to sit on our balcony and enjoy the view. Best morning ever! Hotel also provides breakfast with some local and western delicacies, but we decided to skip it to make room for lunch. Morning! Morning! <laughs> we had a lazy morning and we're just gonna go walk around the village, see it in the daytime, probably get some street snacks. I saw, I've already eyed what I want for lunch. Are you ready? Are you talking to me? Talking I'm to ready, you. talking to you. I'm ready. <laughs> I think my ready. I'm from last night. Yeah, I think we ate too much last night. Anyway, excited to show you guys what the Dome Village looks like in the daytime. Ooh. Yeah. For 800 years of history, Daoxing Dong Village is one of the most important Dong villages in the country. With more than a thousand households and 6,000 people, it is the largest one too. Houses here are built of wood, which is why they're particularly precautious of fire hazards. Dong people historically have their own language, lifestyles, and culture. And walking around it, you can really feel it. I was told there's three treasures of the Dong people. Firstly, the drum tower where households would meet and gather. Secondly, the bridges linking two sides of the town and also where you can take shelter from the rain. And lastly, the Dong songs, which you will hear about later. 
As we strolled around the town, we also stumbled across some paddy fields, which was such a nice surprise. Then I learned that these rice paddy fields also hold a significant meaning to their culture. They mainly grow glutinous rice here, which is why you'll see it in a lot of their food. But also, the fields breed fish and duck, giving life to their tribe. It was noontime, so the hunt for lunch begins. So there is this candy that Nick really likes. Seems to be unique to this place. We're gonna go find it. Oh, I smell, I smell the candy. Oh. <laughs> $20 for one pack. You want one? Five packs. Five packs. So buy five, get one free. Yeah, yeah, you buy So hot. <laughs> Very fluffy. Very fluffy. Quite nice. <laughs> So just went through a very stressful fight with everyone trying to get one of these guys. I hope it's worth it. Mm. Pork. The, the pickle vegetable things. <laughs> Pretty good. We weren't quite full from the street food, so we decided to also get a sit-down meal before heading over to a super cool coffee shop. I got quite interested in the paddy fields, so I messaged the hotel whether we can arrange a car to take us to a nearby famous paddy field, which is the Tang An Ladder Fields. <laughs> so we're leaving the Dong Village and we're gonna go to see some paddy fields. Um, we rented a car, which is probably the easiest way. Um, the hotel helps us arrange us. So, yeah. And the guy really likes Hong Kong songs, so it's <laughs> not a bonus. <laughs> So we just got dropped off, but we still have to walk about 500 meters, according to the driver, up a slope because normal cars aren't allowed in here. Good to get the steps in, yes. <laughs> the weather's actually really nice though, so I don't mind walking. It's almost like cool here. Yeah, it's not humid like Hong Kong. It's cool when there's no sun, so perfect. <laughs> so the only thing is beware of cars because there are some cars that come through and the road is really narrow. But the view is just insane. Don't know if you guys can see it. As you walk through this Tang An Dong village, you can clearly see some similarities with Daoxing, but it is much smaller and the mountain view is really the main attraction. If you want to experience fishing in the rice fields, that's also something you can sign up to here. But we're mainly here to admire this view. I feel like the video doesn't do it any justice. Everyone's just waiting for the sunset here. I'm not sure how much we're gonna see because the sky is not too clear today. 
<laughs> As the sun sets, we walked back down the mountain and returned to Daoxing, grabbed dinner at a different restaurant to try some other dishes. The glutinous rice spare ribs was bomb. We also got the sour soup again, as well as this beef intestine stew, which was not for us. After dinner, we grabbed some watermelon before rushing back to the hotel for a dong singing performance. <laughs> The hotel served local rice wine during the show, and we found out that Dong people traditionally had no written language, which is why storytelling through songs was so critical to their culture. For our last morning, we took it slow again, admiring the view for one last time and grabbed some breakfast from downstairs. I tried the yo cha here and whoa, it tastes so different to the one we had in Guilin. I think I preferred this one more. <laughs> Last morning before we head back to Hong Kong, we're gonna go check out the observation deck. Hopefully it gets, gives us a good view of the entire village. But Nick is very unwilling because it requires a bit of a climb. <laughs> So moody all the time. <laughs> the climb up really wasn't so bad. Just a few steps and the view was spectacular. Although my Insta360 couldn't really quite capture it, but thankfully I had an iPhone. We spent the last few hours walking around the village, finding new things, grabbing some last minute souvenirs and chatting to some locals before ending it at our favorite restaurant for the first night. We're back at our favorite restaurant here. Have lunch for our last meal. My favorite thing is that they serve this rice water thing. It's so delicious. Goodbye. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> and that's it. The hotel took us back to the train station and it was packed. Oh. Manic at the station. We are waiting for our train. We got here a bit early. Um, we thought there would be traffic, but there wasn't. But there's a lot of traffic in the station. <laughs> Oh, we had a good trip. What do you think? Yeah. It was so nice, relaxing, and hospitality was amazing as usual. They even gave us some little souvenirs. Oh, I can't take it out, but... <laughs> red rice. It's red rice. Apparently um, local to this area and not something you can find easily outside of um, Daoxing Dong village so excited to try! <laughs> but yeah, I highly recommend this place for a relaxing weekend away from Hong Kong. Um, <laughs> Although it doesn't look like it. Yeah, even though it doesn't look very relaxing right now. But it was. Anyway, see you guys next time. Bye!